Hey guys, it's me Angelo, your 17-year-old Filipino tinker. It's been almost half a year since I last posted a video tutorial. And to make up for that, I am back with a very big and special one. So this week, we're going to build your very own, life-sized and fully functional Star Wars BB-8 droid. I went out to buy some materials from the mall and here are the things you'll need in order to make the project. For the electronics, we have an Arduino Uno as the brains of the robot. Next, we have here a high-powered Pololu VNH motor driver which will drive both of our metal gear box that we have here. We also have a Bluetooth module. This will be the one that would communicate through our smartphone so that we could control our BB-8 robot using our smartphone. Next, we have here a 3-cell lithium-ion battery pack. I made this one by hooking three lithium-ion batteries together, specifically the AIM 650s. Next, you'll need a beach ball that has a diameter of 51 cm or 20 inches. That's the actual size of BB-8's body. We'll be using the beach ball as our mold for the paper mache. Well, my original plan was to cover the beach ball with fiberglass, but the store ran out of fiberglass, so I chose to cover the beach ball with plain canvas. So in order for that to stick together, we'll be using two bottles of PVA glue and a bottle of wood glue. You'll also need a paintbrush to apply the glue. You'll also need a can of wood putty for smoothening the body of BB-8 and you'll need a fine grit of sandpaper to smoothen it out. For BB-8's head, we'll be using this huge ball made out of styrofoam. And we'll also need some smaller pieces of styrofoam for the eyes and the other details of BB-8's head. As you may notice, BB-8's head stays upright most of the time. That's because they have a special magnetic clocking mechanism. So we'll be using some neodymium magnets, and we're going to make a makeshift ball bearing set for the head of BB-8. Day 1 The first step in making BB-8 is to find a beach ball similar to bb 8 size. Then grab your air pump and pump enough air until you reach the maximum size of your beach ball. Later on, we'll be making a paper mache using this beach ball. Our bonding agent would be a mixture of two parts of glue to one part of water. With that said, pour glue on a container of water and carefully mix it using your paintbrush. Now let's start making the body of BB-8. Basically, we're making a very large and perfectly round piñata. Gather a bunch of old newspapers and cut thin strips of it using your cutter knife. Then carefully lay the strips on the surface of your beach ball, then paint glue over the strips. Do the process again and again until you're able to cover the beach ball with three layers of newspaper. I was on Christmas break when I was doing this project, and I was in a hurry to finish it before I get back to college. So to speed up the drying process, I used a hair dryer and left the paper mache to dry overnight. Day 2 Three layers of newspaper isn't enough to make a sturdy body. I had to reinforce my paper mache with two layers of plain canvas. Plain canvas is a very good material for making paper mache. It's thicker than paper and it hardens really well. She said the reason you've been hurting. So you look beyond the side. Imperfections are inevitable. In order for BB-8 to run smoothly, you'll have to make sure that there are no overlapping sheets of canvas. You can use the sharp edge of your cutter knife to cut off those overlapping layers. Then, cover a final layer of newspaper over the layer of plain canvas. Then leave it out to dry overnight. While the body dries, it is wise to make BB-8's head in time. This is day 2 of my build and things got a little delayed. It's actually raining hard outside, so I had to let BB-8's body dry in this room. There's no sun, so the drying process took a lot longer than expected. So while I let this thing dry, I made BB-8's head. 
I made two versions of it. I have here a styrofoam version and the roll cage version. The styrofoam version was made using this huge styrofoam ball. This is around 300 millimeters in diameter, same as this one. And this is a lot um, lighter compared to the roll cage version. The roll cage version was made by um, putting together cutouts of foam board. So in this tutorial, I will be teaching you how to make the styrofoam version. We'll have to cut the styrofoam in half. And in order to make a clean and perfect cut, we'll have to use a trash bin as a stencil for marking the cutout. Then use your hacksaw to cut the ball in half. The most difficult part in making the base head was the beveling process. As you may notice, I have already beveled the edges in the styrofoam ball, and in order to do that, I had to use a styrofoam cutter. I didn't have the budget to buy one, so I made a makeshift version of it. For the makeshift styrofoam cutter, I recycled the wood from a broken picture frame, then used it as the base for my components. I soldered the switch, a lithium battery, and a coil that I stripped from an insulated wire. When you press the button, the coil should heat up and turn red. Finally, I mounted a metal standoff or a pin as a pivot point for my styrofoam. With this, you can make a perfectly beveled edge for BB-8's head. Ta-da! Bum, 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 bum. Okay, now it's time to smoothen the head of BB-8. Start by applying a layer of putty on the surface of BB-8's head. This will fill in the gaps. Any excess in the putty will be sanded off later. Day 3 While the putty of the head dries, I got back to BB-8's body. This is day 3 of my build, and I've noticed that after letting the paper mache dry, BB-8's body still has some gaps left. So, we need to fill in those gaps using this bottle of wood filler. Carefully apply a layer of putty like how you did with the head. When it dries, you can sand off the excess layer of putty with a coarse grit of sandpaper. You're looking for a sandpaper with a roughness of around 100 to 300 grit. The process is very tedious if you do it manually. You can make the work easier for yourself by using an electric sander. Do this until you get a marble smooth surface. Once you have achieved that, you can start to paint the whole thing. After sanding the body of BB-8, we're now ready to spray it with a can of white spray paint. But before you do paint, please remember to wear a mask. I had help from my dad for adding the details on BB-8's body. We used the internet as a reference for getting the exact details from the movie. First, we combined the Sphero and the one from the movie trailer. With that, I prepared the PDF file for you guys. Using the mathematical concept of ratio and proportion, we were able to derive the approximate measurements for BB-8's artwork. Using a pencil and a compass, we were able to make perfect shapes of circles for BB-8's head with the accompaniment of a ruler. In this step, we're going to cover everything with masking tape, especially the areas that you don't want to get sprayed. I had help from my dad. While he was doing this, I was designing the mechanism of BB-8. Again, let's start spraying. Now, BB-8's body. Now, 
After the paint dries, you can now peel the mask. Just please be careful. My uncle and my cousin decided to help. They traced the pencil markings with a marker. In addition, they added more details. It's Christmas Day, and what better way to spend your Christmas than to hack and destroy some Christmas ornaments. <laughs> Just kidding. The one that we had was frosted. To remove the tint, I wiped it off with acetone, then used a hacksaw to cut it in half. I sprayed the ornament from the inside using a black spray paint, leaving the outer layer of plastic unpainted. This gives a shiny and reflective finish to BB-8's eye. Okay, now let's add more parts and details on BB-8's head. BB-8 seems to have a little black thing dangling near the eye. It looks like a microphone. The closest thing that I could find which I have with me was the cover of my deodorant. For BB-8's antenna, we used and hot glued a Wi-Fi antenna. Before we build BB-8's robotic mechanism, we'll have to cut his body in half using a hacksaw. In this step, we're going to cut some wood for the base of BB-8's robotic mechanism. This is where we're going to mount the electronic components later on. For the blueprints of the measurements, you can download it from the link below. <laughs> if you're wondering, this is a really large compass. For cutting the pieces of wood, I used my jigsaw. It's much easier and less tedious to use compared to a hacksaw. Now I drilled some holes for the brackets and mounted the metal gearbox together with it. Then I suspended and mounted the Arduino in place over three studs of metal standoffs. Then I stacked the motor driver over the Arduino, then connected the left and right motors to the motor driver's terminals. I mounted both packs of lithium batteries with strong strips of mounting tape. And to make it even more secured, I added some zip ties, reducing the chances of the batteries falling off the mechanism. Now connect the Bluetooth module to the Arduino. Just simply follow this diagram. I hot glued four deodorants on the four sides of my robotic mechanism. This will act as my makeshift ball bearing set, which will reduce the friction. Now breathe some life to the project by uploading the Arduino program to the Arduino. Connect a printer cable from your Arduino to your laptop, then download the Arduino codes from the link below. It's compressed on a zip file, so you'll have to extract it on your desktop. There's a large possibility that the Bluetooth module will interfere with the Arduino while you're programming. To prevent that from happening, temporarily disconnect the data lines of the Bluetooth module from your Arduino. Then you can now upload your program sketch. By the way, don't forget to reconnect the wires. We're going to test the program. Time for the moment of truth. First, you'll need to install and download an app called Arduino Bluetooth RC Car. Don't worry, it's free. Open the app and tap on the settings menu. Tap on the connect and select the name of your Bluetooth module. It should turn green once you've established a successful connection. Pressing the buttons should make the robot move. In this step, I'm going to teach you the magic and science behind how BB-8's head stays upright all the time. Let's start with the mechanism inside BB-8. Your first task is to find a strong magnet. Speaker drivers are good sources of very strong magnets. I recycled a blown-out speaker driver, then removed the diaphragm and the voice coil. I separated the magnet from the frame by hammering it with a screwdriver and a mallet. The mechanism should run smoothly from the inside of BB-8's body. Then again, I used some deodorants as my makeshift ball bearing set. Then I hot glue them on a smaller wooden base. This will house the servo, the magnet, and the ball bearings that will roll around inside the body of BB-8. 
I added a standard servo so that the gate could rotate its head while it's moving. I mounted the servo with some nuts and bolts on the mechanism's base. Remember the speaker magnets that we recycled? You'll have to hot glue two of them on a wooden shaft. These magnets are very, very strong. They're strong as new DNU magnets, but they're a lot heavier. Screw the arm of the servo to the wooden shaft of your magnets. Then mount the magnets, the shaft, and the arm to your servo. And now you have a magnetic mechanism. Using four wooden shafts, I was able to mount the magnetic mechanism to the main robotic mechanism. Now for the external magnetic mechanism. Again, I recycled some deodorants for my makeshift ball bearing set. We need to make it as light as possible. So the material that I've chosen to use is plastic from a clothes hanger. Using my lighter, I melted the plastic for it to fuse with the roll-ons. Now I have a triangular shaped roller. For the magnets, the store ran out of neodymium magnets, so I chose to use this fridge magnet. The installation of the magnets are very simple. Grab half of the body and let it sit on top of the internal mechanism. Throw in the magnets and let them position themselves. Then hot glue the magnets to your assembled set of rollers. Then hot glue the external magnetic mechanism set to BB-8's head. This is how both mechanisms work and this is how it looks like. When you're sure that everything works, you can finally assemble the whole thing. Grab the assembled mechanism and put it inside the body. And finally, seal the whole thing using a bottle of super glue or wood glue. Although, the only thing that I have realized from the end was the accessibility of both the switch and the charging port. I was able to fix that on my second attempt to build the BB-8, which is the one that I flashed on the intro. I added a voice module, a magnetic switch, an external charging port, and a circuit that would allow me to program wirelessly. The first version also had stability issues. The head falls off when I run the robot at faster speeds. I was able to resolve that on my second version. May the force be with you. You're on camera, Lauren. And you'll post it on YouTube.